This video is all about the Bosch fuel injectors which were used on the Dejectronic fuel injection system on early Mercedes R107s, early Porsches, early Volvos, early Jaguars and other cars as well. Now these are known as electronic fuel injectors or EFIs and on the Dejectronic system that fuel injection system was designed to run at a constant pressure of approximately 30 PSI or 2.1 bar. And the only thing that ever changes is the duration at which the injector is opened and closed, which is um, decided by the car's ECU. What happens over time as, is that these fuel injectors begin to fail. They either leak and start dripping fuel, in which case they will bleed your fuel pressure away. You'll no longer be running at the correct fuel pressure and it will be difficult to start your car both when it's hot and when it's cold. Um, you'll find you might have a running rich um, condition whereby your fuel is using far more fuel than it needs to and smells of fuel. You might find that you have a rough idle and the car might not be running properly because you're not getting a, an atomized spray of fuel. You're just getting a dribble coming out of here if the injector is not operating properly. Another common problem is not so much with the injector itself, but rather with the injector seals. Now, these injector seals seal the injector against the body of the car, the engine block, and they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. If you go along to Mr. Injector, they'll be round like this. You can still get the top hat shaped seals, um, which were the original seals. If your seals are leaking, then you'll be drawing in air which will give you all sorts of conditions such as a rough idle, a stumble, and obviously you'll be running the wrong air-fuel mixture in your engine, which will lead to all sorts of other issues. Now, if you don't have any problems with your car, but it's still running the original fuel injectors and the original hose, it's not a bad idea to change it because these days fuel has more and more ethanol in it, and what happens over time is that the little short sections of fuel hose begin to degenerate and crack. And in the best case scenario, that will simply drop small bits of rubber into the filters inside your injector and it will no longer run properly. In the worst case scenario, these can actually split and crack and start dribbling fuel onto the hot engine, causing a fire. The injectors have filters in the top there, which you can remove with a five mil screw. When you send the injectors off to get refurbished, um, that is what they will look like there. Now, if you have gone to the rig wall of actually taking your injectors out to change the hoses, do make sure that you actually test the injectors because eight out of eight injectors that we took out actually leak. And I have done a complete video on how to test and clean injectors, very simply using a Coke bottle and a Devault um, air compressor. But it, don't just change the hoses and then put the injectors back in, assuming that they are working properly. Test them. There are at least three generations of these early fuel injectors. The first generation came without these plastic pintle caps, which just protect the nozzle here and they had a single barb at the end there, the idea being that you would cut the fuel hose to length and then just clamp it on with a standard fuel clamp. Those early injectors would have come in blue or black. The black ones, the number ended in 0013, and the blue ones, the number ended in 0015 for the M116 and M117 engines respectively. The next generation of these fuel injectors came with the pintle caps pre-attached and um, they came for the M1, M116 engine. They were yellow ending in part number 0022 and in the M117 engine ending in 0024 which is what these are here and once again they had the single bar. Later generations of this Bosch fuel injector came with the fuel hose crimped on and in order to get that off you effectively had to change the whole injector and they had slightly different part numbers for the m116 engine they were yellow and they ended in 0034 for the m117 engine they were blue and ended in 0036 now these ferrules as they're called that's the metal crimp bit they came in several different shapes and sizes this is a large ferrule here but on um, originally they would have been smaller than that, so a small metal pre-crimped ferrule. 
And finally, just to conclude, in the last generation of these fuel injectors, when you bought them from Mercedes, they did not come with this rubber ring here or the circlip. You had to buy those separately. And indeed, if you send this unit off to Mr. Injector for refurbishment, it will come back with a thicker washer and without that circlip. So they've done away with that circlip and they now use a thicker rubber washer. There are plenty of videos out there showing people lifting out the uh, fuel rail with the injectors beautifully coming out, all four of them, and the seal um, injector seals attached. But in real life, it's often not as simple as that. In the rest of this video, I'm going to show you what it actually took to get these fuel injectors out of our Rusty 450 SL parts car. And I want to give you some tips to avoid damaging the injectors, because when we came to remove these injectors, three out of the eight injectors were damaged. This injector here had a cracked top like that. It won't affect the performance of the injector and you could just glue that down. This injector here had this bit chipped off. We've still got that bit. Once again, you can glue it on. It won't affect the performance of the injector. And this injector here looks like a rat has gnawed the top of it. Now, I would suspect that in all cases, what somebody's tried to do is pull these injectors out with a set of mole grips around the plastic. And that is a big no-no. You will damage and crack the plastic if you try and do that. This is our 1974 Dejectronic 450 SL. And we are gonna have a go at taking out these four fuel injectors. And the injectors are just held down by a little nut there. And then the rail needs to be disconnected here. And it's already actually been cut at the end there, that pipe. And then there's some cable ties which we have to undo. So let's just undo some of these cable ties first. First cable tie we're gonna undo is this one here. It's important to remember where these things are cable tied to. So if you ever want to put it back together, you can remember. Okay, and then there's another cable tie just here. And there are just four 10 mil bolts to undo. I'm gonna do that off camera. Now to get to these last two bolts, you have to take this bracket off here. This bracket is held in by two bolts. I know bolts aren't normally too difficult to get out. So I'll have to drop them into the engine. There we go. Let's remember which way this bracket goes on. The hole is towards the firewall. Now this is our parts car and we don't have to be too precious about it, but it goes without saying that if this was your car, you would make sure that there was absolutely no dust or dirt anywhere near these injectors. So when you take this out, there's no chance at all of things falling into the um, combustion In chamber. Theory, when you've disconnected this hose here and at the back here, this should just lift out nice and easily, held in only by nice soft rubber grommets. But in practice, getting that out can be really difficult. And it's at this point that most people start going in there with screwdrivers and trying to lever the thing out and end up damaging the injectors. So you could start off by trying to put a bit of penetrating fluid down there to see if that helps. But the thing is to be patient and gentle and don't end up cracking these fuel injectors. So far we've managed to get one of those injectors out and coincidentally this injector looks like it's been out before because it's got a standard hose clamp there instead of a fuel clamp. I have been battling for days to try and get the fuel injectors out of our Dejectronic parts car. We've got one of them out and I think that's because it's been out before but these fuel injectors here are absolutely solid in there. Get some movement in here and sprayed a whole load of plus gas down for the last few days and maybe we're just about to get this one here hopefully. What a battle it was to get this out. It's taken us days and I'm glad that this is a parts car because it's almost impossible to stop some of this stuff here falling into the engine. It might just be too far gone to save, but we'll send them off to Mr. Injector and see what he can do with them. That is the last of the four injectors on this side of the engine and hopefully yours will not look anything like that. Well, that is the hole that that fourth injector came out of. You can see just how much gunk there is down there. It's almost impossible to stop some of that falling into the engine. Obviously using compressed air and everything else is an advantage, but we'll get a vacuum cleaner on that and see if we can get some of that 
and away from that hole. What we used to get those injectors free was some Arctic shock release free spray and that kind of shrinks, hopefully shrinks the metal down and helps break the rust. I'm not sure if it did much good, but certainly the power of that jet blowing away dirt and grime helped. We're just gonna have a go at taking the fuel injectors out from the other side. Now on this side, there are a few things in the way, so it might help to have a 10 mil ratchet spanner help you get in there. I managed to get that last screw out there without taking off any of the brackets, just using a little ratchet spanner and then in up with our fingers in the end. Now in theory, this should just lift out now, but of course, our experience from the other side is going to tell us that this is not going to come out easily. This is just held on by one cable tie here. These fittings are too rusted to get undone, so I can't remove the fuel rail. So we're just going to go in there with a Dremel tool and cut them off. Now that we've got all the hose clamps undone, we should just about be able to get this fuel line out. Here we go, we've got this fuel line out. It's worth noting that it is actually brazed together. If you were restoring this car, you'd probably send this off to get plated so it all came out looking like that. And obviously you'd replace all of this fuel hose here and all of these clamps with probably with stainless steel ones. In an ideal world, or a slightly less crusty car, these fuel injectors would just wiggle out and pull out. But what we're going to do is get a set of mole grips around here. It's important not to damage the blue plastic. We're going to get a set of mole grips here and see if we can wiggle those. The secret is just to be patient and also to be armed with a vacuum cleaner because once these start coming loose, um, there's a good chance that you're going to end up dropping stuff in the engine. I think we've just about got this one here. This is what this one looks like. You can see it's still got the original Mercedes hose on it, um, but you can also see just how much debris there is around here. So you need to be very careful when you take these out that you do not drop that in the engine. Block. I can see that somebody has been in here before because this injector, the blue plastic is cracked. And what somebody has probably done is they try to lever this injector out using this like that against that plastic lip and that you can see that that is not the way to do it at all so i could also see that this here i do not believe is a standard mercedes clamp at all um so whether or not we'll be able to use this injector is another question now on these original fuel injectors where the hoses are clamped on the top and the bottom you should in theory be able to take the short bit of hose off and then this, I believe, should hook over, if I'm not mistaken. It can be a bit fiddly, but eventually you should be able to get that ring off. And that will allow you to get a better purchase around the actual injector. You might have to cut this rubber bit off. But once again, do not put mole grips around this plastic here. You will break it. We've finally got that injector out. Unfortunately, this blue bit of plastic is broken here. It won't affect the operation of the injector. You could just glue that back on, but... As I say, it is important that you don't touch the plastic with mole grips when you're trying to get these out. You can see how the injector seal here, the lower seal is just disintegrated into nothing. This is the hole that that injector just came out of and you can see the remnants of the seal. I'm not going to go in there too closely because I don't want anything to fall down that hole. But um, the other advantage of getting plus gas or WD-40 or whatever you want to use out down there is it kind of sticks all of that grit together and makes it slightly easier to vacuum clean up and stops it falling down the hole. These rubber hoses can be on there really, really tightly and it is very tempting to get a Stanley knife or sharp blade and try and cut them off. But you do risk cutting through to the um, metal below and if you leave a hairline scratch along there, you're potentially leaving a channel for fuel to get out and leak down here and set your car light. So 
avoid at all costs putting a sharp scalpel or knife down that. Just keep, get a set of mole grips on the top and keep wiggling it. Put a little bit of WD-40 on there and just keep pulling. It's just about to come. But once again, let's down that hole. There we go. Once again, another rusty fuel injector, but that will clean up absolutely fine. Just a very slight mark on the plastic there, but that's no problem at all. Bad news on this last fuel injector. I can see that this piece of plastic here is broken off the top of the connection. You could potentially glue that. It's not going to affect the performance of the fuel injector. These fuel injectors are over 100 pounds each new. Um, and if you could still get them, but so it might be salvageable, let's see. Well, that's the last fuel injector there. As I mentioned, unfortunately, that bit is broken. You can see that that is not the original hose on there. So I imagine whoever did this job before used mold grips or pliers to try and get this out and crack that, which is a shame. Our next challenge is how to remove the injector seals, all of which are stuck in those holes. They've basically been melded to the cylinder head after 50 years of heating up. And the way I'm going to do it is, first of all, to screw in a bolt like so. And then I'm going to heat that bolt up with our new best friend, the inductor torch. So that will allow us to get that really hot without getting any naked flames here near the fuel system. This is our parts car, so I'm not too worried about it going up in flames, but um, that may then soften that rubber up and allow us to pull that out with a set of more grips. So we're going to give that a red hot go. I'm going to finish this video here. I wasn't able to get the injector seals out of this um, 1975 450SL parts car. They're just too melded to the block. Nothing I tried came close to moving them. I think if you were doing this job yourself and you ran into the same issue, the only thing I can think of is actually take the engine out and drill them out. But I'm not going to get involved in that because this is just a parts car. In the next video, I'm going to have a go at taking out the injectors and the injector seals on that 280SL uh, project car here. They look to be in substantially better condition, so I don't imagine that I'm going to have quite the same battle as I had with this 450SL parts car.